If you're a healthcare student or professional, you'll be thrilled to know that the SpiceLogic Decision Tree software is specially equipped with a cost effectiveness analysis feature. Today, I'll walk through the process of setting up a decision tree with the quality adjusted life year, disability adjusted life year, and Markov modeling with time variant probability. So, let's start the SpiceLogic Decision Tree software. Click the Setup Criteria button, then click Cost Effectiveness Analysis. Now you can define your cost effectiveness criteria from these two tabs. First, set up the effectiveness criterion as Maximize Quality Adjusted Life Year, or CALI. You can choose between two formulae. Navigate to the Cost Criterion tab and check the Minimize Cost box. Set the minimum and maximum possible cost value relevant to your decision analysis problem. And then, set the maximum you are willing to pay for each additional unit of effectiveness. You can check this box to indicate that your future payoff will be discounted by an interest rate. This rate will be effective in a Markov model, which I'll demonstrate at the end of this video. Now, proceed. Select the decision node to be the root node of your decision tree. Say a patient is considering three treatment options. Let's create three actions and name them as Treatment 1, Treatment 2, and Treatment 3. Every option has the possibility of success and failure. Create a chance node with events accordingly. To speed up the process, copy the chance node and paste it on the other action nodes. Let's clarify some details about setting up payoff. Every treatment has a fixed cost, no matter if the result comes as success or failure. So you should set the cost for each treatment action but the effectiveness payoff is relevant based on the outcome. Therefore, you can leave the effectiveness input zero for the action payoff. Now, let's set up the cost and effectiveness payoff for each treatment option. Since we defined our payoff in terms of quality adjusted life years, you will see the input boxes for utility and time. For each success and failure scenario, set the effectiveness payoff. Now, set the probability of each event. Add terminal nodes to see the total effectiveness and total cost for a pathway. Okay, now, once you have set up the payoffs, you'll notice the expected cost and expected effectiveness of each node are calculated and displayed in the diagram and the tooltip. Notice the cost effectiveness plane. Each dot in the plane represents an action. They're color based on their dominance level. For example, the red colored actions are strongly dominated. The green color dots are actions that can be considered based on your budget. And the lime green dot represents the best treatment plan based on your maximum willingness to pay for each ICER. Let's change some parameters and see how the chart gets updated. 
notice that an orange dot appears. This orange dot represents a weakly dominated treatment option. You can see the expected effectiveness, expected cost, ICER, etc. on the tooltip of every treatment option dot. In the cost effectiveness analysis, we usually compare an option relative to a standard care option or status quo. You can select your standard care option and see the cost effectiveness plane chart shows relative axis as you can expect. Notice the tooltips. You will see incremental cost and incremental effectiveness based on the selected standard care option. You'll be happy to see this swap button. Clicking this button will swap the effectiveness and cost from the X and Y axis. This will give you another interesting perspective for your cost effectiveness analysis. Usually, effectiveness is placed on the X axis and cost is placed on the Y axis so that you can understand how costly a treatment plan becomes as the effectiveness increases. By placing cost on the x-axis, you can understand the change of effectiveness of a treatment plan as cost increases. You can visualize various other metrics like incremental quality adjusted life year, cost effectiveness ratio, ICER, etc. You can see a table of these metrics from this metrics panel. Not only that, but each chart also comes with a context menu where you will find useful options like showing a data table behind the chart, export the chart, export the data table to Excel, etc. Let's open the data table for the cost effectiveness plane chart. Here are some exporting options like Excel, CSV, or copy to clipboard. Now, I'll show you how you can use a simple variable instead of the utility and time input for your effectiveness. Simply visit the criteria page from the view menu and choose this option, a single custom variable. You can name the variable as life years and select maximize to indicate that the higher number is preferred. Now, go back to the decision tree and see the input for effectiveness is simpler, asking you for a direct number. Now, I'll demonstrate how to use disability adjusted life year as an effectiveness payoff. From the view menu, go to the criteria page and select minimize disability adjusted life year or DALI. Same as Cali, you can choose a formula to use for your DALI. The default formula is the one that uses sophisticated calculation based on beta, K, and C. It uses the Murray integration that takes disability, weight, age at death, age of disease onset, life expectancy at age of death, etc. The other formula is simpler you will be able to specify a direct YLL and YLD number. YLL stands for years of life lost, and YLD stands for years lived with disability. Let's select the first formula and see how the decision tree payoff panel changes. Okay, now I'm ready for the most exciting part of this tutorial, and that is Markov modeling. You know what? You can attach a Markov model to an action or event node. Markov model can be set up so easily that you will realize how addictive modeling software can be. We have a separate dedicated video for Markov modeling, but in this video, I'll briefly show you the Markov feature. Seeing is believing, so let's add a Markov model to a treatment plan. Say you have two action nodes for your decision tree, surgery and medication. From surgery, you can expect three reoccurring states as healthy, sick, and dead. Dead is an absorbing state. Select the surgery node and click this M button. 
Now you see a step-by-step -step wizard shows up. Add three states, healthy, sick, and dead, and proceed. Answer no, as we do not want to create Markov actions in this model. We'll stick to just Markov states. Here, set up the cohort simulation settings and proceed. Now you will set the transition probabilities. You know what? You can use a time variant probability where each age transition can have a different probability. You can import the probability for each age from an Excel file. Anyways, for this demo, I won't go that round. Rather, I will use simple transition probabilities. Select the initial state and proceed. Now, the wizard is asking if you want to add reward for your Markov state. You can choose to set cost and effectiveness payoff for each Markov state here. Behold, a Markov model is created for you. Expand the Markov Analyzer tab and see a collection of charts for your Markov model. Right-click on a chart and click this View Data Table to see all cohort simulation steps. You'll find a dedicated panel for cohort simulation traces here. You can drag and drop a variable and generate a custom expression and view the chart for that expression. You can also create a simple Markov model directly from the beginning without creating a decision tree, as you can see here. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our help desk. Thanks for watching.